Guys, I'm really having a blast going down these Halloween movies with you guys. So far I've done three Halloween movies and I've uh, created a playlist. So if you click down below, I'll post a link to that playlist so that way you can enjoy all the videos. For this session, let's kick it off with Halloween Resurrection. So when H2O came out, they left us with this huge, it wasn't really a cliffhanger, she chopped Michael's head off. So everybody was wondering what's going to happen with the next Halloween movie. I mean, are, they were even tossing up going back to the old Halloween 3 idea. But then there was a poll on HalloweenMovies.com and the fans still wanted Michael Myers. I still wanted Michael Myers. So they made an announcement that they were going to make a new Halloween movie. And I think this was back in 2000, somewhere around there. <clears throat> and then I remember watching the website and going through all the updates and they announced that Rick Rosenthal was going to be directing it. And then I was really excited because Rosenthal did Halloween 2. And Halloween 2 is a pretty good movie. <clears throat> so I remember they had the movie in the can. It was ready to go. And the Halloween season came and went and we didn't get a new movie until 2002, the next year. Which kind of had me worried like, ooh, maybe this movie's not that good. Holy shit was I right. Halloween Resurrection barely stars Jamie Lee Curtis, Tyra Banks, and Busta Rhymes. So Halloween Resurrection had some huge exposition to fill with uh, the end scene in H2O. So this time around they basically did a bait and switch. It wasn't Michael Myers, it was uh, one of the paramedics. And so Michael Myers is still alive, Laurie Strode is in the sanitarium, and that's how our movie starts off. You're so in the beginning of the movie, we see Laurie Strode and she's sitting in the sanitarium and she's got this whole big plan to finally put an end to Michael Myers uh, after three years, I guess, since it's been for H2O. And, and they have this final confrontation and it's just so humdrum, I guess. It's just not really interesting at all, but I'll get to that. I'll get to that a little later. So... And then the premise of Halloween Resurrection is Michael Myers goes back to his house and Buster Rhymes organizes this internet event where you have all these kids and they have to spend the night in Michael Myers' house. That is our story. Halloween Resurrection just, it's painful to talk about because it just has so many problems. I'll start off with the handling of Laurie Strode. The way they handled the ending of Laurie Strode I thought was really weak and uninteresting. Really they should have just rebooted the series after H2O. H2O actually had a, a really good ending. It put a closure on the series. Maybe it's because this was before all the remake craze happened because I think if it would have been in the midst of all that I, I'm almost positive they would have just, re they would have just remade it. Jamie Lee Curtis doesn't even seem like she's really into the part. You can tell she seems like she's just collecting a check. Yeah, she cares about the characters, but she did not really want to do another movie after H2O. But it was in her contract, so she did it. And it shows on the screen. Another huge issue with Resurrection is the cardboard character. All the characters aren't really given any kind of backstory or anything. And you just don't really care about any of them at all. I mean, so when every one of them dies, you, you feel nothing. You, you didn't like them. You didn't hate them. I guess at least in Rob Zombies, you hated the characters. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but in Resurrection, it's just like, it's like after you watch this movie, it's like, okay, did that just happen? Really? I mean, like nothing really happened. Like I don't, there's no feeling whatsoever after watching Resurrection. And the biggest reason for that is the characters. Were all the kids in the house decent actors? Sure. Uh, you know, I, I didn't sense any, like, really atrocious acting or anything. But it's like they didn't really have anything to play with on their parts, you know? Also, uh, director Rick Rosenthal, this movie, some of the scenes feel like they're lit really well, like uh, the beginning. But overall, it just feels like a direct-to-video type of Halloween movie. I'm, I'm almost... I'm almost surprised that it even came to the theater because it really should have just went direct to video. It doesn't have that, I guess, big budget type feel to it. 
at least in Rob Zombie's movies, there was a grittiness to them. You could tell that he really cared about his vision, even though 95% of the population hated his vision. There was some care there, whereas Rick Rosenthal, it, it almost, I know he directs a lot of TV episodes, and it almost felt like a, a Halloween TV episode. Yeah, that's it. Also, this was right after the, the Blair Witch Project, and I think that probably had something to do with what they were trying to do with this movie with the, the cameras, and you could see five different point of views or whatever, and I thought that whole gimmick just was kind of a waste of time. It really added nothing to the movie, and like I'll give you an example. There's a scene in the beginning, and it's shot in the daylight, and Michael Myers is killing one of the crew guys or cameraman or whoever, and that scene is just not interesting whatsoever. Michael Myers isn't interesting as a character in this movie. And so when he kills the person, it feels so cliche and unsurprising and uneventful. It's just kind of sad. Which brings me to an interesting Michael. The only good thing about Michael in this movie I thought was maybe the mask, but even the mask was kind of uninteresting. It, it, was, it was an okay design. I think it was what was behind the mask. Uh, Brad Laurie, he he just didn't seem like that menacing of a Michael type character, you know what I mean? George P. Wilbur has always been one of my favorite Michael Myers because he just kind of had this lumbering, menacing type approach to the character. Also, Tyler Maine was another really scary, creepy Michael. But like I said, Michael throughout this whole movie is just he feels like an action figure. You know what I mean? It's He doesn't feel like a serial killer. And then the last thing, Busta Rhymes. This guy almost single-handedly ruined the whole movie. Luckily, the movie was really shitty without him, but he just gave it a new level of shit sandwich. I remember sitting in the theater and the scene where he roundhouse kicks Michael, I almost got up and walked out of the theater. I swear to God. And I'm not a hater of Buster Rhymes. I actually liked him in uh, Higher Learning. I thought he was really good in that. I thought Tyra Banks was good in Higher Learning. But uh, she's another character that really had nothing to do in this movie whatsoever. And for all that, Halloween Resurrection almost sent the franchise to direct the video. Thankfully, Rob Zombie actually was interested in rebooting the series and a lot of people hate Rob Zombie but hey at least the series is still an A-level horror franchise. So guys that's really all I have to say about Halloween Resurrection. It's it's not a good movie at all. For a rating I would give it two hours lost. If I'm flipping through the channels and Halloween Resurrection comes on TV and there's nothing else on I might have it in the background while I'm ironing or something but it's oh, it's really just a really bad movie. One of the worst slasher movies to come out in probably the last 20 years. And that's sad considering that that franchise is my favorite horror franchise. Guys, let me know what you thought of Halloween Resurrection. I'm looking forward to hearing your comments on this one. Thanks for watching and drum dumb out.